Welcome to the Nuclear Snail channel, where you are going to be staring at my crotch for the next 15 minutes or so. Because I'm about to show you this belt and hip work that I've made. It was made for a happy, happy client. So, if you want me to make some costumes for you, hit me up on Facebook or, if you don't have that, Instagram. Uh, and we will talk about what kind of a thing I can build for you. Anyway, back to the thing at hand. Uh, this is what it looks like. Some of you might have seen uh, the laid out on the floor photos of it on my Instagram. So here it is. Let's talk about its features. So let's start with this side. First of all, right here we have... Uh, well, with this buckle I'm gonna unfasten it right now just goes around the leg like this so I can show it to you better this is well quote-unquote armor and what this main plate is made of it's uh, the coin tray from a cash register like those mobile small steel boxes with a key uh, that mobile traders take to the market or something inside of that was the coin compartment uh, which is just you know a, bun a bent steel sheet basically so I've unbent it with a hammer uh, cut off the edges and here we go um, yeah you can still see the original uh, bend marks from it I did not get them out on purpose so it has a bit more detail looks kinda cool looks kinda improvised um, things looking a bit improvised is uh, one of the most important things to do for post-apocalyptic costume uh, beneath this is this thick, really, really dense EVA foam, not like your uh, judo mats, but a lot denser. The stuff I've been using uh, ever since I stopped wrapping EVA into fabric most of the time, because that just takes forever, even if it looks super cool. And yeah, here we have this knife sheath. So the sheath is actually kind of flimsy, and while I'm having a real knife in here right now, for just showing how cool it looks. It will not be used with such, it's for a LARP knife, so made out of foam, rubber, whatever have you for LARP. Uh, and this is gonna be uh, not used with a real knife because this sheath is kind of flimsy, but it does its job perfectly for a LARP knife. And the, as you can see, looks really cool. I've attached it directly to this uh, leg plate. So when I move, it sits low enough that it doesn't stab me in the belly with the hilt and also it kind of goes almost past the body anyway. Originally I've had this sheath sit right here attached to this uh, this hole right here going down like this but it was too high and too in line with my belly it would just be uncomfortable whenever I would raise my leg and I also even noticed it really late uh, when I was like oh, okay this part is done and then I put a knife in there and try it with that so always test your costumes with you know the way they will be actually worn not just empty not just you know partially the whole thing okay uh, here we have a CNC engraved plate in aluminum with the clan logo of my client he provided it to me and I've put it here. Um, yeah, this is just bolted on top. You will notice underneath that is this uh, torn red fabric. As you know, I love red contrasts or highlights. And what this does is also a material contrast. So we have metal, fabric, metal, and also here we have leather. And with the knife in it right now, we have like this wooden grip right now. So that's a lot of different materials. Material contrast uh, a lot of times makes things more interesting. This is why I've added this as a padding or as decoration underneath this metal plate. Okay, and uh, as I've said, it's just attached with this loop right here around the leg. And up here it sits on a single belt and that single belt I fastened with two bolts. Uh, usually I do just one. That is enough for me in most cases, but I decided to do two here 
so it's just a lot more stable against rotation. Not that it happens, because this belt is really flexible anyway. But especially on rigid belts, it might be a good idea to have two uh, connectors so that it can less uh, likely rotate and uh, you know open the connector due to that rotation uh, if you're using bolts and washers like I do. Uh, moving on, I guess let's uh, jump to the other side to another prominent feature of this. It's this gigantic hook. Now, before we continue with how cool this thing looks, something I have said in the past and will repeat now, decommissioned climbing gear and parts of it should never be used for actual climbing. It was decommissioned for a reason, because it's no longer safe. So, this here is just purely decorative. Yes, it has that rough utilitarian look, but it's just the look. The utility is gone. Never ever climb with parts of decommissioned climbing gear. It's unsafe. It's even suicidal. Let's continue with how cool this thing actually looks, because it looks super cool. Uh, I've uh, repainted this hook to uh, be uh, kind of darkened, blackened with the paint, and then rub it off on all those spots that are outside with some sandpaper, so that you can see in the recesses it's still darker, but on the outside it shines. It's similar to a dry brushing technique, really, just with paint and sandpaper. And I've also painted uh, these parts red, uh, because... Um, it echoes the red on this side, just a bit of red highlight, and I've also stamped it here with uh, my stamps, about which I made a video by the way, uh, so watch that if you're interested in how to make this sort of small but awesome detail really fast. Uh, so I did this to add top level detail, top level meaning it's like really really small detail, uh, but it really brings the thing together. It's like the highlight detail that just makes the whole thing more uh, believable, more cool looking. Uh, so this hook just hangs here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, its purpose is to look awesome and I think it does exactly that because as I've said in my uh, video about using more metal parts, metal parts are just usually so solid looking, literally and figuratively speaking. So here it is. Underneath the hook is this large bag. Uh, to this I applied only this, um, well, let's call it tactical lizard painting effect where you, uh, I don't know if you can see it really that well on camera. Uh, that's uh, when you take, uh, here you can see it, that's when you take some sort of a net, put it tightly against whatever it is you're painting and spray through that and it gives this uh, net um, look to this uh, item that you're spraying. So I've added that, I've added some dirt, but I didn't add any detail because, like if there was like a stencil or any decorations or anything else on this bag, it would just interfere with the hook. Always gotta keep the whole visual composition in mind, right? Always have to uh, consider like that's, is it so important that this on its own looks loaded with detail? I think it's already a lot of detail actually, with all the dirt and distress effects plus all the folds of this bag that occur naturally here. Can you see it? A lot of geometry. Plus this hook on top. Again, material contrast going on here. And this is exactly the amount of detail I want to have here. I don't want to overload with detail. Okay, um, moving on. So... Here is a magazine pouch. I've added a white stencil to it. And uh, yeah, uh, it is a large surface white stencil. I think it looks cool. It grabs attention even from far away. Right, so while in some situations it's better to have some small detail that doesn't cover the whole thing, in others it is uh, good to have a large surface coverage. Uh, if you want to grab attention especially. Uh, if we look at cyberpunk uh, style, then um, there are a lot of things like that. And if it's too many of them, then they also, you know, start competing with each other. And if everything is screaming at you for attention, then nothing is. But in the case where the composition is really toned down, as is usually the case with my work, the things that I want to make pop will pop, such an, as in this case. I love contrast, so... That's why. 
Uh, here we have a kind of almost hidden, but not really, it's just not that visible on camera, a small bag with a zipper for stuff, LARP stuff, and it has this slim stencil on it right here, and I think this looks pretty cool. It's a small amount of detail, it doesn't scream at you, but if you look closely at it, it will still look cool. So, that is the composition on this side. Uh, let's also talk about this right here. It's a belt on top of another belt, a thing I do a lot as well. I sprayed it with blue paint to create some sort of a complementary contrast, and then I rubbed it off with sandpaper on the top. So, the blue paint is really when you look under angles at it, so it's like on the side surfaces and also inside, but the contact surface here is, as far as I can tell, mostly black and rubbed off. Uh, again, authentic wear effect, if this belt was blue, uh, then uh, it would have rubbed off, except in those areas where you can't get to while wearing it. Uh, so I think it gives a nice subtle contrast, or not so subtle contrast with the reds and also the orange of this belt, and the reds that I use here and here. Okay, moving on, other side, another part uh, on this side, this big metallic ring held in place by this belt, which has some cool imprint on it. I took this part on purpose because it just looks cool. So such a nice finest detail that just raises the optical value of the whole thing a lot. Because, um, you know, it's it might be possible but hard to imagine for some of you what this all and most of my work or anyone's work would look like without those top level tiny details that are added at the end but it kind of just like instantly raises the value by like 30 percent from what it looked like before just through a couple of those stencils also this here just just brings it all together right uh by the way here i also use this uh on the sheath i also use this effect with the net and spraying with two types of paint i might might make a tutorial on that but really um i think you will find a lot in uh airsoft like if you look for airsoft painting tutorials uh they also use that so just a net and you know spray through the net for this uh fish lizard like texture effect okay moving on here some uh buckles and stuff, I, I won't address all the small things, although they're also important, such as this, so I will address them, such as, for example, this cord right here, it doesn't really do much, and here in the same color palette, but a different texture, it's a piece of belt, and what this does is just make the termination of this um, sub belt right here, that sits on the hip, um, a bit more chaotic, but also highlights the edge because of its bright color. It just adds, an, again, that additional small detail. Uh, some people will load their works with this, and I have respect for that. Uh, it just takes a lot of time, and uh, it really looks super loaded then. It's not my style, and i rather, you know, invest that time into some other detail than to do this like 500 times all over my pants, which some people do. Again, looks awesome. Uh, it's just not what I do. It, you can add a lot of tiny details everywhere if you want, if that's your cup of tea. Anyway, this uh, ring right here just adds an eye catcher and optical interest and also material echo from bright materials here, bright metallic material, it's here and here, right? A material echo. And yeah, um, it just kind of sits there, you know, <laughs> what else should I say? Uh, here is a small hook for clipping something into it. Uh, again, mostly for optical purposes, but this, this is one of those details that has a practical use, like something small could, could be clipped into it. And also it looks cool. So this is unlike this, for example, this is a pure decoration, but this looks like it has function and it has a small function so there it is um moving on to the back this was a um leather 
a pouch for a lens for a photo camera and I've painted it obviously I gave it distressing effects but I also uh, duct taped two stripes and sprayed in between them with this red paint and on top of that I added another stamp here to make it look like it's some sort of military industrial sci-fi sci futuristic kind of container uh, so uh, with a and also this I added some uh, metal on top of this so with those couple of tricks I made this old lens uh, bucket <laughs> lens um, sheet whatever you call it um, look like something that is like sci-fi industrial and whatever uh, so this is uh, definitely something that can be done in just a couple of steps uh, yeah um, in the middle here is another part of that phased out climbing harness uh, which is this uh, cobra buckle and uh, yeah you see how used up it was because uh, like I, I didn't really even apply a lot of distressing here it was already kind of you know worn which I think is super cool uh, yeah thanks again to Mike and Renee by the way for uh, providing me those so, uh, let's see it from the back once. I think somewhere here you will find a small stencil. Hope you can see it. Let me show you the booty. Yeah, there, there, there it is. There it is. Again, adds uh, some visual interest to the whole thing. Just that stencil and it already doesn't look too empty on the back. Although not a lot is going on here, so I'm just going to turn around. But what you can see here is that every 10 centimeters or so this blue belt from a car is attached to this leather belt. By the way this base leather belt, let me take this off for you, this base leather belt is from like a hay baler machine or something like that, like some sort of a farm machine and it has some cool details to itself, like for example this metal part that connects the two pieces of belt. Or very cool detail here. You see those tiny leather things? It's like a leather thread, like a really, really thick, more like leather stripes that connect um, the two pieces of this belt. Uh, that this belt is originally made of. So this is like really cool. So the way uh, this belt is made is like, if you see in the cross section here, the one belt is cut like this and the other exactly opposing way. So they overlap over a large surface on which uh, this happens with that leather stripe here. This is super cool. Uh, so finding uh, cool materials to work with uh, from the start helps a lot. And it's already cracking and stuff. I hope this holds for a while before it just completely breaks down. But then again, this top belt should also help a bit with that. Yeah, uh, so this is it, I think, for this build. Uh, one more thing to note maybe is I generally tend to avoid leg straps if I can. Like here it is necessary so this uh, thigh piece doesn't you know go flying around. But on this side yeah I could have added a strap to this bag. But then again why? It can just sit there and flop around and it, it offers just so much more motion uh, uh, movement freedom. Like, yes, there is some chance of uh, getting caught up in something with this, but on the other hand, if this does get snagged up on something that doesn't catch it, but more like a door frame or something like that, this will just bend out of the way and then you're free to pass. Pretty much like medieval sword scabbards, while if it's fixated to the leg, uh, you just get stuck there. Uh, but yes, this could get caught up, which is why tactical dudes, uh, you know, real military police, whatnot, uh, they usually have stuff tied to their body and actually going around the leg. Uh, not exactly, but more like on this side, uh, rather than this. However, I personally just hate having stuff around my leg. If I can avoid a leg strap, I will. 
So more on that uh, maybe in some later video, but for now, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was entertaining and informative for you. Um, oh, one, one little thing I will also mention. The way this here is fastened, it's uh, a belt that is attached to this, so I attached it to the inside. You can probably not see it, but there is a bolt with a washer going from the inside to the outside to this belt, and this belt is just attached to the main belt, so it kind of just dangles around there, which I think is not a big problem because, you know, um, it has a locking button here anyway. So, um, you know, just wanted to mention that as well, because it was touching it in a moment. So, that's it. I hope it was informative and entertaining for you. Uh, if so, like, comment, subscribe, check out the Nuclear Snail group on Facebook, uh, linked in the video description. And also, as I've said, um, I do commissions, post-apocalyptic costumes and uh, sometimes props. So hit me up if you want to have something done for you. Also, if you're a regular viewer, support me on Patreon, also linked in the video description. It helps me make more videos for you. Until then, I will see you in the next episode and hail the snail.